Amerika Serikat dan Indonesia membahas sejumlah kerjasama perdagangan, tidak hanya terkait perdagangan, negeri Paman Sam juga ingin menyiram banyak investasi di tanah air. Rekan kami Frida Lidwina berkesempatan berbincang dengan Menteri Perdagangan Amerika Serikat Wilbur Ross. Kami akan hadirkan cuplikannya usai jeda berikut. Thank you so much for your time with CNN Indonesia. Well, thank you, Frida, for having me on. And welcome to Indonesia, too. I understand that you're visiting Indonesia after Thailand and then next on to uh, Vietnam. Vietnam, correct. What kind of um, trade deals or investment deals are you hoping to strike while you're visiting Indonesia? Well, it's both trade and investment. Um, Indonesia is a huge market both in terms of population, in terms of economic buying power. Yes. So, and we have a long history here. Mm -hmm. Companies like Chevron, Exxon, ConocoPhillips have been out here a long time and have done very, very well and have a good relationship with the government. A lot of our newer companies are also interested. Some of the higher tech ones, Honeywell is with us, mm -hmm. Tesla Cars is with us. So. As Indonesia evolves into more of a high value added economic system, uh, it's logical for many more companies to come in. Yes. You were mentioning some of the uh, mining companies earlier, like uh, Chevron, but is there any other areas that uh, the United States is interested to work with, uh, with Indonesia? Oh, surely, all kinds of other areas, both in terms of investment for example, we're very interested in investing in electric power, electric power. here. And we just doubled our uh, international development finance operation from $29 billion to mm -hmm. $60 billion. And we made a whole new set of arrangements with the Japanese development financing entities. And they will tend to co-invest with us in these projects. So. Mm -hmm. We have quite a little bit of government funds as well as private sector uh, funds. Okay. So we're, we're very interested to put more to work. We're also very interested to do more bilateral trade. Given the size of your economy, given the size of ours, mm -hmm. the bilateral trade is far smaller than it should be. Mm -hmm. um, as you probably are aware, the foreign direct investment number in 2017 is 26% higher than in 2018. So the trend is actually decreasing. Are you seeing uh, that number keeps on decreasing until next year or is there going to be any change? Well, I think it's decreasing for technical reasons. Mm -hmm. Remember, we put in new tax legislation okay. that it made it easier for American companies to repatriate earnings that they had made in foreign jurisdictions. And there was a huge one-time influx. Over 100 billion US dollars came in mm -hmm. worldwide. Mm -hmm. So it's, many countries have experienced that technical change. That does not reflect a lack of desire. Okay. We had some very big companies here very interested in doing more business, in some cases doing business for the first time. And I was very impressed with the receptivity of your president and of your two coordinating ministers. Mm -hmm. They clearly had done their homework. They were very responsive to the questions that we had. Mm -hmm. They made an extremely good impression on people. So I have no doubt that more trade and more investment will come as a result. I understand that you just had a visit uh, with our president, Jokowi. Can you share with us what was being discussed Surely. earlier? Well, I had met him before, so we had a very good, very frank and open mm -hmm. discussion. We talked about some areas where we could be helpful. U.S. has gone through a big deregulation process, mm -hmm. and I mentioned to him that just as he wants to do deregulation, what President Trump did was say, for every one new regulation, 
that a cabinet department wants to propose, mm -hmm. they must cancel two existing mm -hmm. regulations. And he seemed to find that idea an interesting idea because it's one thing to talk about deregulation, it's another thing to actually do it. Mm -hmm. Second thing we talked about was workforce development. Mm -hmm. Just as it's a very critical item for your country, so has it been for ours. And Ivanka Trump and I co-chaired the workforce development effort in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So we had a good discussion of ways to go about retraining people okay. and training them in the beginning to fit into a more industrialized and a more high-tech society. Okay. Mr. Secretary, your president is highly unpredictable to a lot of people in this, in this world. And um, many are asking probably if there is a deal going to be signed between Indonesia and the United States of America, for example, is there any possibility that uh, Mr. Trump can anytime veto the deal? Well, first of all, I don't think he's as unpredictable as the media makes him out to be. Portraying him. Mm -hmm. um, I, I find him fairly predictable, mm -hmm. but I know him a little better than, than you folks do. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of a deal, Indonesia right now is under a GSP, which is preferential trade treatment for a number of products okay. coming from your country to ours. Okay. And there's a, re a little bit of a renegotiation to make sure they still meet the technical requirements. Mm -hmm. So your ministers have agreed very, very quickly to send a delegation to the states so we can wrap that up and clear it up. It's not a big number in the overall scheme of things. Mm -hmm. $2.2 billion, mm -hmm. but it is important as a symbol of the good relationships between mm -hmm. the two countries. So mm -hmm. we're eager to get that resolved so we can move on toward more constructive things. Mm -hmm. You are also reading the letter from um, President Trump that he's inviting uh, the leaders of the 10 countries to visit the United States of America early next year. Um, yes. What will be discussed? Uh, well, it will be a, another version of ASEAN, mm -hmm. and I think his purpose in doing it, which seems to be very well received by your president and by other mm -hmm. leaders with <laughs> whom I talked when I was in Bangkok, mm -hmm. seems well received, and it's another way of demonstrating <clears throat> our ongoing commitment to the ASEAN countries. Mm -hmm. fluid um, issue in journalism, the U.S.-China quote-unquote trade war. Is it going to be an agreement being signed this month, actually? Well, I'm fairly optimistic that mm -hmm. we will get phase one done. Done. Phase one deals a lot with current trade issues, mm -hmm. mainly in the agriculture sector, mm -hmm. deals a little bit with intellectual property rights, but there's a lot more to be done in phase two and there may even be a phase three. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty optimistic that phase one gets completed quickly. What day it will be completed on, that's a different Can you give question. us more picture of uh, what is gonna be discussed after phase one? Well, all the other issues. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of structural issues that we have with China mm -hmm. about, excuse me, forced technology transfers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, about respect for intellectual property rights, Okay. about subsidies of state-owned enterprises, mm -hmm. about equal market access. There are a whole lot of, whole lot of issues. Mm -hmm. You were a um, Democrat before 2016, uh, Mr. Secretary, and you turned into a, a registered Republican uh, just in 2017, if I'm not mistaken. How do you view the, the uh, economic developments from your point of view as being a Democrat and now being a cabinet member? Well, if there's and anything a that both parties can agree on, mm -hmm. it's the importance of building the economy. Mm -hmm. There may be different approaches how to do it. President Trump's approach is working. Mm 
-hmm. His approach was cut taxes. His approach was deregulate. His approach was to unleash the energy sector and unleash other sectors. And it's working. Our growth rate is enormous, continuing even though it's now 10 years into the recovery, long time into the recovery. But as recently as last month, there were lots of jobs created. In fact, our biggest problem mm -hmm. is we have many more unfilled jobs mm -hmm. than we have unemployed people. Mm -hmm. We have over seven and a half million unfilled jobs and only about six million unemployed people. So that's why worker training, workforce development mm -hmm. is so critical for us. Prior ad administration, the problem always had been uh, too much unemployment. Mm -hmm. So we have the reverse problem. It's a happy problem, mm -hmm. but it's still a problem. And Ivanka Trump and I are co-chairing the workforce development activity okay. in the United States. Okay. Well, despite all this good news, all these good developments from the States, but in other parts of the world, some countries are facing recession, economic recession and economic slowdown. What's your comment on that? Well, first of all, a lot of that is not our fault. Um, it's easy for a business that's having trouble to point to somebody else who's having the fault. I noticed over the years... I know the black goat is the trade war between the United yeah, States and China. But it's just like I've noticed over the years, a well-run retailer does well even if there's bad weather. A poorly mm -hmm. run retailer always says, oh, well, there was bad weather. That's why my sales didn't come through. Mm -hmm. So I think some, to some extent we used as a scapegoat. But there are serious economic problems that some of the other countries have. Europe particularly has a lot of difficulties right now. And a bigger problem for them than US-China is mm -hmm. Brexit. Mm -hmm. That's a problem for UK, it's a problem yes. for the EU. Uh, I don't know why people don't refer to that as a partial cause of things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last question, uh, Mr. Secretary. Presidential election in 2020. Yes. So if President Trump is re-elected, what's going to happen, especially with the trade war? Well, first of all, I call it a trade spat, not a trade war. Okay. Uh, a trade war indicates that one person is trying to overwhelm the other. Okay. That's not what this is about. What this is about is trying to seek a better balance than had been historically true. Mm -hmm. Our government has made a lot of mistakes in its trading relationships with other countries, okay. not the least of which was helping China get into WTO mm -hmm. without any enforcement mechanism of any consequence in case they didn't abide by the rules. Mm -hmm. That was a big mistake. Okay. I don't blame the Chinese for that. That was an error made on our part. Okay. And so we're trying to correct some of those mistakes. Okay. It even got to the point where the U.S. had agreed with the International Postal Union that you could send a package, a four kilogram package, from Beijing to Washington for one fourth the price it took to send that same package from Washington to Boston, even though that's a much shorter distance. Well, that was silly. There was no reason for that. It gave an unfair advantage okay. uh, to the Chinese. So is it safe to say that if President Trump is re-elected in 2020, there will be trade deals between China and the United States? Well, we're making a trade deal right now. Mm -hmm. We're hopefully making a trade deal. And uh, he wants to make deals. Look at what he's done in his first term. Renegotiated our biggest trade deal in history, mm -hmm. namely with Canada and Mexico negotiated for the first time two trade deals with Japan, mm -hmm. one mostly for agriculture, one for the digital economy, mm -hmm. renegotiated our free trade agreement with Korea. That's a lot. No prior administration has ever done three important trade deals in one year. So the notion that he's unpredictable, 
the notion that he doesn't get deals done mm -hmm. is simply silly. Okay. Well said. Thanks so much again for your time, Secretary, uh, Mr. Secretary, and uh, thank you for your time with CNN Indonesia. Well, thank you. You're a very thorough interviewer. <laughs> thank you. Dan demikianlah program spesial interview bersama Menteri Perdagangan Amerika Serikat Wilbur Ross. Saya Aldi Hawari pamit. Terima kasih dan sampai jumpa.